Hi, thanks for joining me again. This week I thought we'd look at weekly charts and why I like weekly charts. It's not so much that it's the only chart I use or the only time frame that I use, but I would generally look at weekly charts before anything else as I want to understand the underlying sentiments in the market on a certain stock or instrument. Even if I'm going to trade shorter time frames, I prefer to look at a weekly chart before I look at any other time frame. I really want to understand what may be going on in a stock and how the market itself is feeling about it in a broad sense. This is an ASX stock, Coles Limited. It's the daily chart and you can see there is a pressing nature to the upside, there's no doubt. But looking at each of the bars, it's a little difficult to understand exactly what's going on. You can see price came down here. This was back in November when the first vaccines came out for the COVID virus. And it was considered in the market that coals wouldn't benefit as much and people may go back to work again, they wouldn't work from home. And as professionals generally do, they use that information, that news article, to ram the market down and try to shake out some holders. You can see in response that the market moved higher. Uh, volume is above average, but um, only modestly. Then you had two down bars in a row. But if you look down at the volume, the two down bars were on reducing volumes. The up bar in response would have been on higher volume, but this was the day the ASX had an issue and closed after 20 minutes of trade and didn't reopen for the rest of the day. And the next bar on increased volume, just slightly above average, put in a bar that's just this bar actually looks like that. So it's a down bar that's closed in the middle. And then you had an up bar on increased volume, which was pretty much a buy the offer situation. And then an absorption bar sideways. Then once again, two down bars down here on reducing volumes. So you can read what's going on, but it's a little difficult. It makes you work hard to do it. But if we switch to a weekly chart, here are your down days, you've got a modest little recovery here. The most interesting thing you'll see straight away is what we could see before, which was the pressing nature to the upside. Following that, these three down bars, which threaten to say the market's going to break down and keep going lower. But each time, price responds higher and doesn't look like going lower at all. This is most likely bullish absorption. You'll see a video on bullish absorption earlier in my price and volume series. This is the market slowly absorbing and accumulating stock without pushing the price against themselves too far in one go. It's a gentle markup where the professionals can accumulate at the same time. You can see all these bars with a high tail and poor closes, closing in the middle or lower, making holders feel uneasy that we're not in a strong market. But if you notice all these clusters of closes, tight clusters of closes, closing at the same levels, the three main telltale signs for bullish absorption is a pressing nature to the upside, clustering of closes, 
and threatening down bars that see no downside follow through. You can see on this weekly chart, it's far more clear to understand what may be going on in the market. Sure, you could read the daily chart, but it was more difficult. Now, when you find a clear principle on a weekly chart, it's far more powerful than on a smaller time frame. And you might ask, why is that? First of all, the main reason is volume down here. Volume, when I normally speak about it, I speak about it in terms of force or effort, how much force or effort was used by the market when it moved. But volume is also activity, how much activity took place in a certain period of time, in this case, a weekly chart. And volume is information. How much information do we have per bar? Now, if you look at, say, a five-minute chart, a five-minute chart has only five minutes worth of information, and it will project about two bars, perhaps three bars, into the future. You find a clear principle on a five-minute chart an individual bar will project itself into the future by two to three bars, so 10 to 15 minutes into the future. And then a one hour chart shows bars with 12 times as much information per bar as the five minute chart. And a one hour bar that has a clear principle, perhaps like a shakeout, can project its influence on the chart two to three bars into the future or two to three hours into the future. And you might say, well, that's not very much, but if the next bar confirms, clearly confirms the previous bar, then it will then project into the future. So you have the initial bar, two to three bars into the future. If you get a clear confirmation on the next bar, say you had a shakeout and then the next bar was a clear test of the market for supply. That's not so clear, but something like that. Then it's going to project into the future for two to three bars. And then you have a breakout above the highs of the shakeout. Then it's producing an influence on the chart two to three bars in the future. You can see how ongoing confirmation goes from being two to three bars, three to four bars, four to five bars into the future. And that's how the chart develops, how it unfolds in front of you. And then you've got more confirmation here. It's a, a down bar that's closed within the range of the breakout bar. And you look down and you see that volume was low. So this was a test for supply and supply was low, much lower than the previous two bars anyway. And this is how the chart develops and unfolds in front of you. And the more information per bar, the further it projects into the future. And I know you're up with me now. If we look at a daily chart, that's going to have considerably more information per bar than a one hour chart. And it's going to project its influence when you find one with a clear principle, two to three bars into the future, that's two to three days into the future. And the next point is obviously a weekly chart. Now weekly charts develop very slowly and there's lots of bars where you can be uncertain on what's actually going on inside the individual bar. But when you do find one with a clear principle in place, especially if it's been confirmed with the next bar, like these down bars that threaten to go lower, but then produce up bars in response, then you start to understand what's going on and they can project two to three weeks into the future. And there you gain a much clearer understanding about what might be happening in the market. So I would always look at a weekly chart, especially if I'm looking at a chart for the first a stock or an instrument for the first time, to see if I can understand what is happening in the market? What's the underlying influence in place? And then I would move to smaller time frames to look 
and how they correspond with the weekly chart. And if I get confused with an individual bar and can't understand what's going on, I may look inside that bar. In this case, we're going from weekly, so I would go back to a daily chart and look at what happened inside a particular bar, the five days inside that bar, to see if that will help me understand what was actually taking place. Perhaps the only downside is the weekly charts are relatively slow moving and you won't get clear principles very often. But when you do, they're very powerful. They're very powerful because of the activity or information inside them. They have far more activity inside them. You can even go to a monthly or a quarterly chart, but they are so slow moving, it's almost impossible to trade on them. If, the, if when I'm looking at a chart for the first time, I can't understand the weekly, I'll sometimes look at a monthly, but it's not so common. You only get 12 monthly bars in a year. It's just so slow moving where you do get 52 weekly bars and at least there's some movement, some reasonable movement. And I'm always looking for a clear principle because a clear principle on a weekly chart is very powerful and will influence the chart for weeks to come, especially once it's confirmed. Okay, that's my lot for today. Hopefully you found it interesting. Thanks for dropping in again. See ya.